DM refuses to let me cast spell unless I act it out. I joined a campaign with some friends. It was a joke campaign, so I didn't play too seriously. First combat, I cast Dissonant Whispers, flavored it as bad ASMR. DM told me to actually do the ASMR, and when I didn't, he said, I didn't hear anything, so it doesn't work. Edit. I should clarify that I was the only person who did something like this. The other players just said they cast a spell and cast it. I suppose that this makes it my fault, but I wasn't expecting to be penalized for trying to be funny in a joke campaign. I swear to God, people only hold this standard to bards because people are obsessed with Scanlan Shorthalt from Critical Role. Oh, you play music to cast your spells? Okay, play your top 50 hits from your Spotify playlist at the table. Imagine if people held this same standard to the barbarian at the table. Okay, Kyle, it's your turn. How do you rage as you engage the orc army? Ah! Ah! Dude, what the fuck? God damn it, Kyle, not this shit again. I literally just put up this drywall last week. Now, that doesn't seem like a great game. But do you know what can be? Apotheosis. Ever play a game of Dungeons and Dragons and wonder, wow, I wish I could improve my skills by performing actions, instead of waiting to be railroaded into the next chapter of this adventure and magically level up when the DM thinks we need it. With Apotheosis, you have full control of when and how you build your character, simply by playing the game. By playing how you want to, you can create the character of your dreams without the need of a class to guide how you play. And with its fast and deadly combat system, put these new skills to the test to take out the competition and score sweet loot. And right now, you can purchase Apotheosis, its first content expansion, and the standalone Apotheosis Sci-Fi Edition for a discounted price, if you purchase the bundle linked in the description down below. So what are you waiting for? Now's the best time to jump into Apotheosis and make your character your way. And now, let's get back to it. Breakups are tough, but as you can imagine, they're even worse when they happen in the middle of your D&D game. Or in this case, before the game even started. So without further ado, let's gather up a murder and dive into this story. This story is about a game that never got past session zero due to the awkwardness created by a specific player in response to trying to force the others to implement character backstories for everyone that only suited him. To set the scene, I have been the DM for most of my group's games for over a decade. I was running a small adventure, using 5th edition, which had just come out at the time, for several newbies who had expressed interest in RPGs. Joining us was a longtime veteran of my games, from the group I usually run with. In retrospect, I should have seen the red flags before ever having started the session, as this veteran player has had some issues with other members of my regular group in the past due to having the my guy and main character syndromes. However, he insisted on joining to help the others learn, as one of them was his girlfriend that he just met. And he wished to be there to personally help her get a grasp of the rules. The players were five in total, though this story mainly concerns the aforementioned couple, who we will refer to by their classes, Paladin and Ranger. The party consisted of a rogue, a paladin, veteran player, a ranger, his girlfriend, a sorcerer, his girlfriend's sister, a cleric, and of course myself as the GM. We began Session Zero, by explaining the basics of how to roll up characters, by choosing race, class, backgrounds, and the usual stuff. A few of the players wanted help writing up their backstories, as they only had a general concept of what they wanted their characters to be like, but needed assistance in fleshing out the details and to help them further with the setting. 
We were playing in the Forgotten Realms. Ranger begins by stating that she wanted to be a hardcore survivalist who grew up alone in the woods, using the trope of literally being raised by wolves. She had no notion of civilized manners, and no idea who her parents were. This will become important shortly. We worked out together that it was likely that her human parent abandoned her. She was a half-elf, on the edge of the high forest of Faerun, to be raised by the elven people due to financial problems and to the stigma of raising a half-blood child. Her elven parent left immediately after her birth. Rather than being adopted by the elves, they shunned her as well. And it was finally a lone druid who found her and took her in, teaching her the ways of natural balance and the cycle of life. Paladin also decided to write up his character's past as being from the High Forest, so that there was an easy way to link his character to that of his girlfriend. He was a courtier from the fallen realm of Irlan, which was once the kingdom of elves of the High Forest before it fell to ruin. This would make him well over 500 years old. Another red flag. But I did warn him that his character would not suddenly be a master of history and knowledge simply because of his age. He wanders the forest, looking for relics of the ancient past to preserve, and seeks the renewal of the elven lands as a way to uphold his oath to the ancients. This is where the problem begins. Paladin suddenly decides that it would be cool if, as a way to further link their characters' fates together, Ranger would agree to have her parents be known to him as friends or descendants on her elven side to this fallen realm that he used to protect. She reluctantly agrees, but makes it clear that she still does not know her parents and therefore does not know him yet. The link between them would be tenuous at best. She is also not interested in the politics of elven realms, fallen or otherwise. She just wants to hunt and scout. This apparently did not work for him, as he continued to write in his backstory that not only does he know her parents, now suddenly her elven parent is actually descended from the line of royalty that he was sworn to protect. So, it is now his duty to defend her. She is, after all, the heir to the royal lineage with this sudden rewrite. Ranger was having none of it, saying that it made no sense. Why would Paladin have allowed her to be abandoned in the woods this whole time? Why not raise her himself instead of risking her to the wilds? His response caused me to do a double take and elicited a few groans from around the table. He would not have had the heart to raise her as a daughter, for from the moment he laid eyes upon her, when she was born, he apparently watched the birth, he knew that she was destined to be his true love. He would watch over her from that point on, always at a distance, making sure no harm ever befell her in the forest. Ew. What the fuck? <laughs> oh shit! There are so many things to dissect from that line, but I think it's self-explanatory why nobody should be writing stories about how 500-year-old men suddenly fall in love with infants and stalk them until maturity. Ranger immediately ripped her character sheet out of his hands and began yelling at him saying that there was no way she was going to use that disgusting idea, and that he was forcing his character onto hers through the use of their backstory. She wanted help writing one, but he had no business narrating to her the plot of her entire life up to this point, without her having any say in it. I tried to interject, saying that he might indeed be getting a bit heavy-handed, with forcing details into her character's history. But he just ignored this response, and just kept arguing that it was in everyone's best interest to let him 
weave a connection between the characters. It was at this point, Sorcerer finally spoke up, stating that what Paladin was doing was bringing main character syndrome to the game by forcing both his and her characters to be arbitrarily important in the setting. Rogue agreed, stating that so far, Paladin has been showering Ranger with unwanted favoritism, and that everyone else was feeling left out, while I, the GM, was unsuccessfully trying to defuse the tension and salvage the situation. Paladin responded by saying that he was clearly more knowledgeable than them, for having played for much longer, and even went so far as to calling both Rogue and Sorcerer idiots. He said that if they did not want his help, they should leave. They did. So did Ranger, who immediately broke up with him, on the spot. As he stormed out, I was stuck in the awkward situation of trying to console Ranger, while also telling everyone that the session was over, and that I would be going home. I later contacted everyone, except Paladin, over Messenger, asking if they were willing to try again with a new Session Zero. They replied that this experience left a sour taste in their mouths, and that it might be a long time before they ever attempted another RPG again. And that is how a disastrous Session Zero ended the adventure before it ever began. TLDR one player forces an awkward romance plot into his girlfriend's character backstory by inserting his own character into it and claiming that she is secretly royalty, who he immediately fell in love with when she was born. He was a 500-year-old elf. She breaks up with him in real life, and everyone awkwardly leaves Session Zero, vowing never to touch an RPG for a while. It was weird in Twilight. And it was weird in here too. This player made a 500-year-old perv that stalked a child from birth and saw absolutely nothing wrong with it. Stephanie Meyer should be taking notes. There was really no other way for this game to move forward unless he realized that this is weird as hell. And when it comes to his abuse at the table, being a veteran of the game does not excuse one from taking over the party and deciding everyone else's story for them. He may have played for a while, but clearly he learned nothing from his experience. But he's not the only one whose experience apparently did not translate to being a good player at the table. As in this next story, we find out what happens when a Florida father plays in his daughter's game. So without further ado, let's channel our inner Florida man as we hop on our gators and dive into this next story. I'm female, 25, in Florida, and the hurricane has kept us indoors for the past three days. My younger sister, 10, asked me to play D&D with her. She's never played it, but I've told her some things about it. I called my brother, 20, and we waited for my dad, 48, to get home from work. He grumbled a bit about being forced to play, but didn't argue. He'd do just about anything for my sister. I walked my sister and brother through character creation on D&D Beyond, but mostly left my dad unsupervised. I made some basic statements, like how to roll for stats and such. We were starting with level 1 characters, to keep it simple for them, and me. I added my brother and sister's starting equipment, and asked my dad if he had finished his character. He had. I asked to look. He added a 30 modifier to every single stat. He got to the money section and just kept pressing 9 until it wouldn't let him add any more coins. He had 1 billion platinum, 1 billion gold, silver, and copper. I protested this. He simply said, If it was against the rules, the website shouldn't have let me do it. You're level 1. You don't have one billion of any coin, let alone all of them. I'm a dwarf. Dwarves mine gold and gems. I am independently wealthy because I am a dwarf. I then looked at his inventory. He had given himself seven magic items. 
including a staff of thunder and lightning, gauntlets of ogre strength, and a ring of jumping. Wolves can't jump so good! I fixed that problem! He also gave himself an ancient white dragon as a mount. Dad, you can't have an ancient white dragon at level 1. Yes, I can! My ancestor saved his life and now it's indebted to my family. So even though I'm level 1, it serves me. That is not how white dragons work. Website, let me do it! So it's not against the rules. I was gonna redo his character sheet, but my brother was laughing so hard, and my sister thought him owning a dragon was cool. We were in the middle of a hurricane, and bored out of our minds. I let him keep his broken dwarf barbarian, and his mithril scale armor. If you're wondering how the game went, my brother didn't like it too much, because it didn't have any combat. It was supposed to be a low combat, roleplay heavy, homebrew campaign. Not really my brother's preference for Dungeons & Dragons, which is fine. It was a bit hard to establish any consequences, with my dad's dwarf being that overpowered. But this was a game for the lols, the second I realized that, and adjusted to it. We all had more fun. TLDR, I didn't watch my father make his character sheet, and he gave himself an ancient white dragon. While it felt like it was going to go bad for a bit, it seems like at the end of the day, the game was more about blowing off steam than playing D&D. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes plans don't fall through, and sometimes the rules get in the way of just having fun. Wish he would have conveyed his desire to troll the hell out of this game beforehand, but this story feels ultimately harmless, and even kinda wholesome. Stay chaotic neutral, Florida man. And as for the OP, I reached out to confirm, and luckily for them, the storm has already passed by their area in Florida. And now that it's passed, hopefully you get to run a game more to your style. Though, I wouldn't be opposed to hearing another tale about the level 1 dwarf who rides an ancient white dragon. As for the rest of us, I think that's where we'll end today's stories. And if you like these stories and would like to see more of them, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. And be sure to leave a like on today's video. Made it this far? Why not leave a comment? And if you can't think of a comment, then leave the comment, Florida Man so that I know you made it to the end of today's video. Want to support the Crow's Perch directly? Then join our Burberistocracy over on Patreon. And join patrons like our Counts of Quills, like Sharkay, Kirito Kazuto, Critical Kunik, Evix, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. And of course, introducing the Barons of Beaks is Florida Dad. Introducing Barons like Ghost Legan, Mr. Hypocritical, Javon Megan, Jesse Shodell, Kuntos Weasel, Moet is Mao, Chunky Salsa, Tech Blog, Corister, Cardispawn, A Modest Pastry, Jester King, Gentle, Lord Rand, Gibber Woods, Wormy, Den of the Drake, <clears throat> McYeatley, and Anya. But you could always pay more. Like if you became a Duke of Feathers. Like the School Bus, Mirage Faxis, Shiro Tatsuma, Quinn, the Forgotten Druid, Jarrett Sewer, Blues Otters, Jarrett Samlin, Doc Salty 96, Matthew McQueenie, and don't you know, Acroth. And with all of that out of the way, I will see you next time as the crow flies.